Good morning, everyone. I hope you are doing well. Forget about the pre-market. Forget about the stock future. Who cares? We got some good news, all right? It doesn't matter if the pre-market is doing bad. It doesn't matter if the stock futures, you know, you're looking at them. They're all red, which they are. They're horrible. All year long, no matter what the state of the stock market is, if it's a bull run, if it's a bear market, no matter what it is, there's always an opportunity to make money, which is why I never get out of the market, ever. You will never see a video from me on YouTube where I put a face that's, you know, dramatic and I say, I just sold everything, get out of the market, because that would be a lie, all right? Uh, Dow futures, negative 438 right now. S&P 500 futures, negative 60. NASDAQ futures, negative 217. Instead of telling people get out of the market, you can tell them, look, it's a bear market. It, it's crashing or it's doing this and this and that. There's this options that we can take and we can make money. Just do that instead. All right, so pre-market. Now, let me show you some things. I'll show, uh, we'll, get to, uh, we'll get to some stuff in a little bit. Japan, negative 2.9. China, negative 2.7, uh, 2.17. Hong Kong negative 3.9, England negative 1.2, Germany is down negative 3.4%, France is down negative 3.46%, everything in the world is going down right now. WTI crude oil $123.24, Brent crude oil $125.90, natural gas at $5.11 up 8%, gold is up big time at 1.76, corn is up big time. Yesterday I talked about AMPY Amplify, Amplify is already going up. So I took I took position already pre-market hours, uh, early hours, and I'm uh, going to make money today. If I want, I can just do it as a day trade, right? It's going to go up. Oil is going up like crazy, and I can just trade it towards the end of the day, let's say, uh, with profits, or I can just keep it. So there's, there's ways, like we said, and we talked about uh, wheat, for example. Um, that was another way. Or you can do UVXY. Let me skip to UVXY real quick. It closed at 1985 on Friday. Currently, as I'm doing the videos, at 21.55, so that's also going up. I wouldn't keep UVXY for long, though. That's just a day trade, strictly for me. I would never want to keep it longer than that. Now, U.S. futures drop as crude surges on embargo talk. So, U.S. equity futures have been dropping today amid fears about inflation risks for the world economy as oil has soared after the Biden administration raised the prospect of working with allies to ban the imports of Russian crude oil and natural gas. This is crazy, but you know what? As crazy as that sounds, it may be in the interest of the United States. They can send liquefied LNG gas to Europe at higher prices. United States stands to make profits. I'm guessing. I don't know if he has enough to supply all of Europe, but I'm guessing. Markets volatility is only certainty for traders today. You can expect that. UVXY, like we said, is just a sample of what's going to happen today. It's already going up. Here's something else. Equinex announces strategic partnership with Bi with uh, Bifinity, right? Bifinity is Binance, it's uh, Binance's payment technology affiliate. So this is actually pretty cool. And Equinex, I kind of had never heard of them. They are trading on the Nasdaq EQOS. Well, they closed Friday at 146. The news just came out exactly 30 minutes ago. 30 minutes ago, and it's already from 146 to $1.63. So it's going up early hours, already like 20 cents up. Tesla gets stronger with oil rising. Other EV stocks, not so much. So with oil uh, soaring and prices at the gas pumps rising along with it, investors who want to bet on electric vehicles have a choice, and that's Tesla, one of the choices. Sony and Honda team up to develop electric cars with goal of sales uh, beginning in 2025. That's actually news that I uh, talked about and I posted on my Twitter um, and Patreon uh, um, uh, about two two days ago. So it's not uh, the, the Honda, uh, Sony, is uh, it's, uh, this news has been around for two days. But Honda is a really great stock. HMC is the ticker symbol. It's a $28 lifetime chart. And you're going to say, Mike, lifetime chart from 1996 to now, 28 bucks. that's it. Honda, like most Japanese stocks, are, you know, the, the Japanese economy has never recovered since 1986. It never has recovered to what it was in 1986. Uh, also, that's not bad because it's in a deflation mode, believe it or not, for over 10 years now, for over a decade. It's just growing very, very, very slow, kind of like a pause mode. But when things get really bad 
and if things get worse in the U.S. economy, you're going to wish that you have access to Japanese stocks or you're going to thank Japan for being in the state that it is as an economy because it's not bad. The Japanese economy is not bad, but they're like in a deflation mode and their stocks are way, 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 way better valued, massively better valued than stocks in the United States where when there's a crash in the United States, stocks can drop as much as 80%. Uh, Honda, not so much. Japanese stocks not so much because they're if if they are overpriced if they are they're mildly mildly uh, overpriced. How war in Ukraine drives up inflation at U.S. farms, supermarkets, retailers. Chinese tech firms weigh opportunities in Russia after Western pullout. TikTok and Netflix pull out of Russia. Restaurants debate masks and COVID-19 rules. And Chewy co-founder Ryan Cohen takes large stake in Bed Bath and Beyond. Ex-Bank to report fourth quarter and for fiscal uh, year 2021 financial results on Monday, March 28, 2022. And New Technologies announces their fourth quarter and full year 2021 financial results today. New is trading at $10.44. Used to be at some point at 50 in 2021. Has dropped a lot. But I think that this still is an awesome company. And at $10.44, I would like to add some shares for the long term. Xpeng Corporation at $29.53, XPEV is the ticker symbol. Also, let's keep in mind that today the Federal Reserve will report consumer credit data for January. <laughs> Can you imagine the data being bad? What's going to happen to the markets? Total consumer debt is expected to rise $20 billion to a record $4.4 trillion. Following a slight decline in 2020, consumer credit increased 5.9% last year. Also on Tuesday, Dick's Sporting Goods and uh, Mongo... Uh, MDB is the ticket symbol, will release their earnings. And the National Federation of Independent Business on Tuesday, on uh, March 8th, released its Small Business Optimism Index for February. Consensus estimate is for, for a 97.4 reading, roughly even with the January data. And the, next, and the net percentage of small business owners raising selling prices reached the highest level since 1974. U.S. Shell Oil and Gas Producers, Oasis and Whiting in talks to merge together. Keep that in mind. Their ticker symbols are OAS and WLL. So Whiting Petroleum, WLL, $83.43. And Oasis Petroleum, OAS is the ticker symbol, $144.49. Analyst ratings, Kenter Fitzgerald maintains overweight on Village Farms. Lowers price target to $9.30. VFF is the ticket symbol. Raymond James maintains strong buy on Finance of America. Lowers Raymond James maintains strong buy on Finance of America. Lowers price target to $8.50. FOA is the ticket symbol. Raymond James maintains outperform on Fidus Investment. Raises the price target to $21.50. FDUS is the ticket symbol. SVB Leering maintains market perform on Bluebird Bio lowers price stock to $10. BLUE is the ticker symbol. KeyBank downgrades uh, Sempra Energy to sector weight. And KeyBank upgrades Next Era Energy to overweight, announces an $87 price target. NEE is the ticker symbol. So let's look at a chart here that shows us what industry has performed the best so far. Energy is obviously the best performer. Next comes utility, and maybe we should start talking about some utility stocks on IPO Market Watch. Basic materials, real estate, industrials, and then healthcare starts on the negative side uh, and then goes all the way down to the worst. Consumer defensive, communication services, technology, consumer cyclical, financial. Market calendar for March 7th through March 11th on Monday, earnings, like we said, for new technologies. On Tuesday, Dick Sporting Goods and uh, Mongo. And also Caremax, C-M-A-X is the ticker symbol. On Wednesday, we have earnings for Camel Soup, CrowdStrike, Oatly, Zim Integrated. Oh, we need to look at that. Zim Integrated, uh, Z-I-M, Zim Integrated Shipping, Z-I-M ticker symbol. This is a really good stock. And with the prices of commodities going up and uh, also the prices of shipping rates, the shipping rates have been already rising. Just recently, they rose again. We, it's going to be very awesome to see the earnings report for Zim Integrated Shipping, which I think will be a really good earnings report, and the stock will go even higher, so keep that in mind. Uh, earnings, Oracle, 
Rivian, this is for Thursday, DocuSign, JD.com, and uh, Ulta Beauty, U-L-T-A is the ticker symbol. On Friday, the earnings are for Futu, RLX Technology. Very interesting here, RLX, because I uh, this is a stock I talked about on Patreon, and I own RLX Technology also, RLX is the ticket symbol. I'm going to be looking very closely at the earnings on Friday for RLX. Market calendar for March 7th and March 11th. Uh, on Mondays, we have consumer credit. On Tuesday, trade balance, wholesale inventory, small business optimism index. On Wednesday, we have job openings and labor turnover survey. On Thursday, we have the Consumer Price Index. Everyone's going to pay attention to that one. The federal budget, everyone's going to pay attention to that. And weekly unemployment claims. On Friday, we have University of the University of Michigan Index of Consumer Sentiment. With that being said, thank you very much for watching this video. I wish you all a good trading day today. Take care.